Lessons from three market crashes. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stride of coffee and let's have a look at this article from Yahoo Finance. So, I lost it all, what this investor learned from three market crashes. And I thought, you know, this is particularly interesting considering the way the market is going at the moment. We can see the ASX 200 is sitting at 6,600 pretty much. There you go. So it's it's grown up quite a bit from its, uh, its crash down in March. So we'll have to see what advice we can get here. If we look at the Dow Jones, it breached 30,000 all-time high. It's still hovering that. S&P 500. There you go. Is that an all-time high? We'll look at all. Yep, there you are in the midst of a global pandemic. Look at the stock market. Money printer go brewer, anyone? The NASDAQ 100. Or does, it's just, no, oh, it's not an all-time high. What are you doing, NASDAQ? The Nikkei. There you go. There. Look at that. Not quite an all-time high. It, oh, well, yeah, of course, it peaked in the early 90s. <laughs> Maybe, don't worry, they'll make it back. They'll make it back. What about the DAX? The DAX. Let's have a look here. Pretty, looks like it's an all-time high or very close to it. So, I mean, clown world, everyone. It's just going crazy. Can you afford to bet on the Fed? Because look at gold. We're sitting at, what, 1812 bucks. Silver is... We'll jump over here. We might as well look at the commodities as well. Silver's sitting at 20... Oh, boy, there we go. Gold is now at 1786. It's gone right back down. So all of this... It's plunged. Silver is at 2258. There you are. And while we're here, let's look at coin market cap and check out Bitcoin. Is it one uh, 17,000 and change? So it's taken a bit of an edge off. It hasn't quite breached. Oh, there we go. Sorry, 16,093 in the time I'm looking at it. It's and it looks like it's going down again. So I have to keep an eye on that one everyone i mean this crypto is so volatile up down up down up down i imagine people are taking profits there were a whole lot of people that would have you know put sell orders at the previous high psychologically some i bet you some would just want to get out so let's have a look at these three lessons and let's see if you've learned them as well so stock spot founder chris brick made his first investment at just 10 years old since then, the weathered investor has lived through the through three major market crashes and lived to tell the tale. In his most recent note to investors on the platform, Brick, Bricky, is that how you pronounce it? Bryick shared the lessons he'd learned from the 2000 tech bubble bust, the 2008 GFC, and the 2020 coronavirus pandemic. So the 2000s dot com bubble. Do you remember that, everyone? The first crash I lived through was the 2000 tech bubble bust, or when the tech bubble burst. And this was the steepest market fall I'd, I've ever seen, he said. In about a year, the NASDAQ, which is the US tech industry, fell by 80%. As a young trader, I made a lot of money trading tech shares in the lead up to this. And unfortunately, I lost almost all of it in that year. The big lesson, always lock in some of your gains, he said. No one has ever lost money taking a profit. And well, that's a good lesson, but it's hard to do sometimes when you just see it keep going going you want to ride that bubble up up for the moon and that's what we're seeing in crypto right now we're seeing people taking some profit Bryak said traders in cryptocurrency should also heed that advice as ma as many tend to regret not having locked in their prof profits and putting it into cash or a diversified portfolio so that well yeah because crypto just went crazy so the 2008 gfc the GFC saw the Australian and US share markets both fall by more than 50%, making this the biggest crash that stock spot founder ever lived through. The grim lesson he learned from the 2008 GFC was markets can always fall much further than you expect. More than that, it's, it is, it's to also have a strategy in place to withstand these major falls and to make sure you're not leveraged when you invest. That is, make sure you don't borrow money to invest. Well, how many people are doing that? Any money that you're borrowing to invest can be lost very quickly, and it can entirely wipe out your portfolio in a market crash. Well, that's uh, how many people are doing leveraged option trading. Uh, there's a risk associated with it. It's fine if you want to manage the risk. 
But we're in a country here where people can't even manage buying a mobile phone at the moment. Any money that you're borrowing to invest can be lost very quickly. Yep. The 2020 COVID pandemic. If the GFC was the biggest crash you'd ever seen, the coronavirus crash was the fastest. It was about the equivalent to the famous 87 crash. In two months, the market fell by 35% in Australia and in other markets even more. But the reason the market crashed and crashed quickly was because it was completely unpredictable. If everyone's predicting something, it tends to already be built into the price and probably isn't something you need to worry about, he said. The lesson, always be worried about the things that nobody's thinking about. The best thing you can do to prepare for unpredictable events is to make sure you have a portfolio that can withstand a crash and have some money set aside that's ready to invest if it does so you can actually take advantage of it. Put money aside. I mean, this is all pretty good advice. So there we have it. What do you think, everyone, about these the advice that he's given for us? So let's, you know, from the dot-com bubble, lock in some of your gains always lock in some of your profits you know have you managed to do that the second one the gfc uh, don't borrow money to invest don't leverage don't leverage or be smart with your leveraging and finally have money or, or always be worried about the things that nobody's thinking about and have money set aside so you're ready to invest and take advantage of the crash because, I mean, there are some opportunities at the moment. I mean, there we... Crypto. I'll, I'll be waiting till it hits around 3,000 again. <laughs> How many of you bought in 3,000 of Bitcoin and then just sold now recently? I mean, it's interesting to see what's gold telling us. Look at that. Where the support level's there. We'll have to see. You know what? Let's go to... We'll go to Trading View. And let's have a look at what some of the people are saying about gold. So we'll jump here. Oh, look, they've got a Black Friday sale. <laughs> there you go, one month free for TradingView if you're a fan of it. So you can see here. So here, let's look at the ideas for gold. I like these. So gold will grow from the support zone. We'll have a look. Grow, uh, gold grow to resistance level. So we're here, support zone. So this is where they're predicting. Let's see, has that played out yet or how old is it? So, well, there you go is that the support zone this is the problem where you put these charts on so it doesn't look, we'll have to see these bursts it bursts below the support zone here we go there you go ah same person making the same claims on the 26th and there what else do we have grow the net gold is the next step to grow in depth of review of gold why should you enter a long trade now We'll have to, I mean, there we go. This Is this what they're predicting? We'll go play. So we'll see how they're going. Is now the time to buy into gold if you're concerned with the market? Can you afford to bet to risk betting against the Fed? Long, long, long. Gold is still consolidating. Short position. Short position. Have we look here. So here's the range going down. There you go. So the support. They're saying the support is at 17 50 you can't see there because my picture's in the way and this one here short there you go so we'll have to see but guys let me know your thoughts and opinions what do you think of these three lessons that this investor has given us from previous crashes uh, i'm looking at gold because it's well what people use to hedge against the volatility in the market and i mean what else are your investment suggestions? Are you a, a Forex trader? Are you a crypto trader? Or are you just sitting in the shares? Are you just waiting on cash? Or are you just a property bug? You know, one house after the other. Let me know your experiences in the comments down below. What is the best lesson you have learned? You know, are there any other takeaways you would have? Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you're a fan and want to support the content I create here, there are a few ways you can. You can join us on YouTube or Patreon. You can support us using our affiliate links at Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or Aussie Broadband. You can buy a merch from the Teespring shop or from our very own blog. You can support us using Gold Pass from the Perth Mint or via PayPal. Take care, everyone. Have a great day. And I will see you all in the next episode. Bye for now.